it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel, Relax Cut Glue. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you all here with me today. So today I'm going to be making a master board using my hexagon punches. I'm going to use my two inch one this time. Over the weekend, I had a little play and I used my one inch. So I got this pack. Let me back up. Last week, I got this pack and I showed it to you guys. And you get a one inch punch, a one and a half inch, and a two inch in the pack. So I used the one inch and I made this little master board on this um, postcard here. And it was a pain in the you know what. So uh, the, one in, the one inch, it's gorgeous, don't get me wrong. It just was very time consuming. And all these little pieces you see here, I had to add those by hand afterwards. So it was very fun. It was just very time consuming. Um, love this. So I added matte medium over the top, but I just wanted to clar clarify something really quick here. I have a friend and I totally forgot that she worked for USPS. I've known her almost my entire life. So I messaged her and I said, Hey, I have an idea. Can I laminate postcards and then mail them? And she said, yes, absolutely. You can laminate them. She said, but you have to use a regular stamp on it, not a postcard stamp. So I'm going to be, um, where did I put all of those? Well, I have a stack of my uh, grid postcards that I had been doing and I'm going to laminate them and then send them out instead of using the clear packaging. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna do a test one to see if it'll work. Um, but she's worked there for a long time. So I trust her judgment. Okay, so I wanna make a master board. So I'm gonna have to punch out um, this is a paper pad from Michaels and I'm going to grab a few pieces of paper from it that I really like that actually are, that's what this was from too. So I want to do the same kind of thing, only I'm going to make a 12 by 12 master board. So let's take, I want to use this piece of paper. I am stumbling over my words. You guys, it's like a, it's going to be over a hundred degrees here, like 110 or 108 or I don't know, whatever. It's all the same once you get over a hundred. Um, today and Jackson and I just had to go run an errand and I was, even with AC in my car, I was sweating. Like it, it is so hot outside. Not a fan at all. I know there are a lot of people who love heat, but I'm not one of them. I get sick. Okay. So, so far I have these three. That's pretty. Let's see. What else do I want to add? I do not want to add the purple. Not a fan. Ooh, this yellow would look nice. Should I do this yellow? Is there another yellow though? Let's see. Okay. So this is my color palette. I think this will look nice. And now I'm going to go punch out a million hexagons with my hexagon trim or punch. Oh my gosh, a bit, a bit, I just can't speak today. I'll be right back. I'll, I'll just be right back. Okay, I'm back and my thumb about fell off <laughs> from punching all those hexagons. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Anyways, I ended up cutting up one other sheet of paper. Um, it was just in one of my scrapbook paper pads. It's just some old writing. So I have that. So at first I was thinking maybe I'll do it grid style, but I actually think I'm just going to do a straight master board where I bunch all these pieces together, like my postcard where I just bump them right up. Now with this postcard, I also went around each of the edges with ink. I am not doing that again. That took forever. Okay. So I kind of had these in a pile in some kind of weird order. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna move these cause, well, there went my order. Okay, here we go. Let's just start gluing. All right, let's get started with this master board. Oh, it turns out so good, you guys. I cannot wait for you to see it. So what I ultimately decided to do was to, I finished this master board and I end up cutting it up. I show you all of that. And I think I'm gonna make one more master board, but make it with strips instead of uh, hexagons. And then that way I can, um, have like two different kind of styles in my, in my book. It's going to be super cute. I am going to be putting together a little collage book. I'll show you guys an example of those again at the end of this video, but they're super fun to make and you can make them in all different sizes. And I'm just using my cinch machine to bind them, but I'll go over all of that at the end of the video. So you guys can see what I'm up to and some ulterior, ulterior, alternate, alternate ways to make your book if you do not have a cinch machine. 
So this was so much fun. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. I definitely will say it goes a lot quicker when you use the two inch hexagon versus the one inch hexagon. Oh my gosh, that took forever. I do think though that it would look amazing on a 12 by 12 master board if you made just a ton of did the little tiny hexagons. Oh my gosh, that would look so good. I will say though that my thumb felt like it was going to fall off by the time I was done cutting all of these. <laughs> it just took forever. But it was worth it. And look how awesome it is. The pieces just slide together all perfect. It's just amazing and very satisfying. So I'm trying really hard to um, kind of look ahead in each row to see where I need to put each piece. It kind of looks like I'm just grabbing whatever, but I am being very strategic about it. I don't want too many colors that are similar next to each other or too close to each other. Sometimes it kind of has to work that way, but I really look at my whole row and what I'm putting next to each thing, if that makes sense. That way I don't have like uh, that green piece next to another green piece in another row. You know what I mean? I try really hard not to have that happen. And it's okay if you do. Like I said, we're cutting these up. Once you add, um, well, for one, once you cut them up, they look totally different. And two, uh, you can collage on them like I'm going to do. I'm going to add some focal images to each of my pages. So listen, if you accidentally put two colors that are the same next to each other, it's not going to make a difference. I'm just trying not to if I don't have to. So right there, as you will see here, I put one over the edge. I'm going to let that dry, but then I'll cut it off, and then I'll use that when I need another edge piece coming up because you will need edge pieces every other one. So definitely let it dry first. That way it doesn't wiggle around when you're cutting it, and then chop it off, save it, and use it for another piece. So here I was kind of putting a couple pieces there. You see, I didn't glue them yet, but I knew I wanted to put those pieces there. So I kind of worked around them. Um, again, I was being strategic about if I had a blue already on the left side, I need to put one on the right side. I, you know, you know how it goes. I hope you guys had a fabulous weekend. We did. We were just really lazy. I've been in a lot of pain lately with my fibro so I just kind of took it easy it was really hot um, yesterday we made we had the best dinner so we grilled some pork chops just little thin ones you know no bone none of that and we had Caesar salad and Andrew made chimichurri oh my gosh I'd eat it off a of flip-flop it was so good. So we, oh, and then I made some, I chopped up some russet potatoes, just cubed them and then um, browned them up in a pan. And so we put some chimichurri on those as well as our pork chops. Oh my gosh, it was heavenly. So good. I feel like I just want to put that chimichurri on everything. So, so good. Very refreshing. Great on a nice hot day. Um, it basically had, so Andrew's had, the main ingredients were cilantro, parsley, garlic, olive oil, um, and then like a few other things. Red wine vinegar, I think, is in it. So you got red wine vinegar, olive, extra virgin olive oil, cilantro, parsley, garlic. Oh, and red chili flakes. Oh my gosh. It you guys, it is just something else. And then you let it, he made it the night before, so it could kind of marinate the night overnight, but it was so good. And then tonight I'm doing, because it's going to be like 110 or something like that. I don't know. It's just too damn hot is what it is. Um, I'm making street tacos and I'm making them in the crock pot. Chicken tacos because that's just easy and it won't heat up my house. And stuff like that. I've got both the dogs in here. Sherman's snoring away. Sherman's doing really good, you guys. So much better. I shared all the intimate details with the glue crew, um, but Sherman, we thought he was going to die last week. It was really scary, and um, he is making a full recovery, and the, over the weekend, he was absolutely back to his normal self, so that was a huge relief for my family. Uh, so yeah, we just hung out. We watched football. Super excited about that being back on, and we watched other sports and kind of hung out as a family, and we had a great weekend. It was really fun.
look at this thing coming together. So it's really hard to tell, but a lot of these papers, so that green paper with the flowers and then the yellow paper with like the X's, those have gold. So the little X's you see are all gold. And then in the middle of the flowers, there's gold. So this is very sparkly. Also with the white paper with the orange flowers, there's gold in all of those flowers as well. It's just not coming up on camera. If I angled it, you would see. So this has a lot of like sparkly gold in it and stuff. So it's really pretty paper. So cute. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I can't wait to make my next one. I'm trying to decide if I should do just all hexagons or if I should do... No, I think I will do strips on the other one because that way it's like a little bit different. All the pages don't look exactly the same. That'll be nice. I, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. And then I'm super excited to come back and collage um, little little bits on these. Um, I'll get out my collage books and maybe add some animals, some flowers, some plants, butterflies, mushrooms, all the things. Oh my gosh, so fun. I wish you guys could see this in person because I feel like it looks so much better. I don't know. Do you ever get that way when you make something, you take a picture and you're like, P.S. It looks better in person. <laughs> That's me all the time. I'm like, it looks better in person. Why is that? Everything always looks better in person. Actually, that's not true. Sometimes things look better on camera than they do in person. So I guess it, you know, I can go either way. This master board, I feel like it's taking forever, even sped up. These things take time. I was going to tell you something else, too, and now I don't even remember what it was. Darn it. Don't you hate it when that happens? It happens to me all the time. I think you guys have seen enough of what making the master board's about. Let's move on to the next step where I talk about what I'm going to do, and I decorate this master board a little bit before I chop it up. Can't wait for you to see that. All right, I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. Okay, I was gonna cut this part out, but I thought it might be important for some of you to see how I filled in the top portion where there's those missing spots. Basically, you can see there on the right, I'm just gluing half of my hexagon and I'm putting the point into those little triangles that need to be filled. Once those are dry, I turn my paper over and I just cut off the excess paper that's hanging over the edge. I do save those because sometimes you need them if you're making another master board or something else to fill in those little triangles of the hexagon when you're done making it. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys how I did that there in case you've never used hexagons before and you didn't quite know how to fill that in. Um, yeah, so that's that. I just wanted to show you that real quick here. Okay, now that I have my master board done, I was thinking I could stamp on top of this as well. So let's add some bees. I'm just gonna use brown, um, ink for the bees. I'm just going to add a few stamps here and there just, you know, for no other particular reason other than I can and it's fun and we have stamps. So let's use them and make things look amazing. I'm just going to add some bees here and there. One more up here, maybe right. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever it stops, that's where there's going to be a bee. Okay, so let's try, let's do a butterfly next. Bees, butterflies, we're just going to add all the things. And then I'm going to cut this up and make a little book out of it, which I think will be really cool. Now I can collage on top or I can just leave it as is. I don't have to collage if I don't want to, but I do. 
because hello, collaging is fun. All right, we got bees, we have butterflies. Let me add one more somewhere. Right there, okay. And what else do I want to add? I could add a bird or some leaves. I could add that. I think I will use my green ink for that too. It won't show up very dark because it's a really light one. It's called Fern Green uh, by Archival. It's Archival Ink by Ranger. And let's add. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Indeed. There we go. Add one down here and let's add maybe one more. Where do I want to add it? I'm just gonna put it right here. Okay, so we have those. Is there anything else that I want to add? There is a smaller leaf too. I could add this one. Oh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, maybe I'll do a couple of these, the smaller leaf as well. Put one down here in this corner. one right here uh, la, 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 la. it's so hard to find a spot <laughs> uh, I don't know what to do let's just put one right there all right one more one more let's just put it right here okay well, that looks pretty stinking cute if you ask me. I like it. Stamps. I could add pen. Nope, I'm going to leave it. Okay, so the next step would be to cut this up. So I am going to leave my, the backs of mine plain. I know lots of people like to collage on both sides. I just, I'm not always a fan of that. So I think what I'm going to do, now I need to decide, do I want to cut these um, in three by threes or four by fours or how I want to do this. I think I'll do four by four. I think that'll be a fun size. So let's do that. Let's get this out and we will cut away. Ooh, this is so fun. Okay. So we've got four here. All right, here we go. I just cut it. That felt crazy. <laughs> and then four again. Oh wait, that's not four. That's four. Okay. And then let's make sure this is also four because you just never know with paper anymore. My goodness. Okay. That looks like it's four. All right. So then I will cut it into four again. Four. Okay. So here are the pages of my book so far. So I'll have this Oh, this is going to be so cute. So I am going to put this together with my cinch. I think I'll do one more masterboard, but do it in the strips instead of the hexagons. And then I will put this book together and I will collage in it tomorrow. But so far, this is what we have and it looks great. This little corner slipped, so that sucks. But I, I mean, I can collage on these and stuff, so it's not going to be a game changer because I can put images over these as well. So this left me with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not right. Four. It should have left me with 12. Three, six. Oh yeah, nine, duh. Not 12. Okay, so I have nine pages here for my, for my book. So let me show you what I'm talking about with my collage book. So basically I make these like little books like this, where this one has never been decorated, but... I collage all the backgrounds and then I put the book together and then I can collage in it. So that's what I'm going to make. 
and I'd make them in all different sizes. Here's a smaller one. Here's a couple more. So yeah, I just cut like this one. It looks like I cut them down to three by three. So I got the most out of my, um, or this might be three by four. This is three by three. This is four by six. So yeah, you can just cut up your 12 by 12s into all different shapes and sizes and make little books. If you don't have a cinch machine and you want to make a book, you can always use little, um, let me see here. Do I have one? I think feel like oh, right here. You can always use these. You can get them at the Dollar Tree in different sizes and you just punch a hole and then put the little ring in there and it'll hold your book together. All right, guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to drink your water. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fabulous day, friends. Bye.